The Latvian National Armed Forces have now received all the self-propelled howitzers bought from Austria. These are M109A5s. I am pleased that in such a short period of time we have received all the howitzers purchased from Austria, which is a historic contribution to strengthening the capacity of the Latvian Army's indirect fire support. So far, the armed forces of Latvia does not have any artillery howitzers. Only mortar and old 100mm guns are in service in the army. More than political considerations, Thailand is managing its supply sources with financial wisdom and constraints. The Royal Thai Army plans to acquire new battle tanks to replace some of its already decades old M41A3 Walter Bulldogs, M48A5 patterns and M60A1 A3 patterns. The figure mentioned by some sources 200 tanks. Replacing the aging American equipment with new American main battle tanks has been considered as prohibitively expensive. Moreover, as the military-led coup took place in May 2014, hosting a democratically elected government, the subsequent sanctions closed Bangkok's access to much of the Western weapon manufacturers. As Thailand access to the original equipment of manufacturers in the West became severely restricted, Bangkok sought alternatives, namely in Russia and Ukraine. In 2011, the Royal Army had already ordered 49 Ukrainian-made T-84 Oplot T tanks worth $214 million. By 2015, however, the Thai Army had received only 10 Oplot Ts and due to the Ukrainian manufacturer's continuing difficulties in implementing the contract, Thailand declined further deliveries in April 2017. In December 2015 and February 2016, Thai delegations visited Russia to conduct first-hand assessment of the T-90MS tank. As the Thai army opened the tender once more, China's Norinco made also its offer in the form of the VT-4 or MBT-3000 as a credible alternative. Ultimately, the price and availability of the equipment led to Bangkok's final decision. Despite the attractiveness of the Russian offer in terms of capability, the price tag proved too high. The Chinese offer, the VT-4, emerged as the most cost-effective alternative. After the contract was approved in early 2016, the first batch of 28 VT-4 tanks worth 150 million was delivered to Thailand in October 2017 and destined for the 3rd Cavalry Division. Following the delivery, the Thai Army got a green light from the cabinet to procure a second batch of 10 VT-4s for $58 million. The third batch intended for a full 49-tank strong battalion still awaits cabinet approval. Norinco's VT-4 provides the army with the required capability at an attractive price tag. Offering excellent cost-effectiveness and acceptable quality, the Chinese VT-4 will likely fulfill the equipping needs of several more Thai divisions. To address quality concerns regarding Chinese hardware, Beijing offered to build a major maintenance, repair and overhaul facility in Kong Khan, thus in Thailand. The new facility will allow Thailand's local industry to assemble, produce and maintain Chinese land equipment for the Thai army and involves technology transfers to the country's emerging defence industry. On 10 October, Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen announced she intends to enhance national security, warning her government will not submit to China's pressures amid growing military threats in the region. She said Taiwan would increase its defense budget annually, while further developing its domestic defense industries. Using a National Day speech to reinforce Taiwan's self-rule, Tsai said the island would use all methods to prevent infiltration by other countries. She added China's increased pressure on Taiwan had challenged the status quo across the Taiwan Strait, but Taiwan will not recklessly provoke Beijing. 
Taiwan's premier, William Lai, already said that the country's defense budget is likely to increase by $592 million in 2019 growing by 5.6% compared to the previous year, which stood at $10.6 billion. The defense budget for the coming years accounts for roughly 2.16% of Taiwan's gross domestic product, the highest over the past 10 years. The US authorities have constantly expressed that Taiwan should increase its defense budget as the imbalance of military capabilities across the Taiwan Strait has grown rapidly in recent years. The US National Defense Authorization Act for 2019 includes provisions supporting senior military-to-military -military engagement between the US and Taiwan and set, states that the US should provide military saves to Taiwan particularly for developing its asymmetric warfare capabilities. Exercise Trident Juncture 2018, described as the most important since the end of the Cold War, is gathering in October-November 40,000 soldiers and sailors, 150 aircraft and 70 ships from 31 countries. The first naval aviation activities took place in Iceland from October 15th to 17th. Most of Trident Juncture is taking place from 25th October to 7th of November in Norway, Sweden and Finland. The build-up phase uh, is now completed. This is to test the establishment of reaction force within the framework of Article 5 of the Alliance. The article provides that if one of the members of the Alliance is attacked, the NATO in its entirety automatically comes to its rescue. For the scenario chosen here, 5,000 Alliance soldiers are landing in Norway under Canadian General Christian Junot. Among them, 600 French of the 3rd uh, RIMA integrated into a brigade under German command. Germany is engaging 8,000 military and 2,000 vehicles, including 200 armored ones. On the US side, 300 Marines arrived in Norway on 3rd of October to join the 700 or so USMC soldiers already there. An amphibious force is also taking part. It carries elements of the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. It involved the USS Iwo Jima, LHD-7, USS Gunston Hall, LSD-44, and USS New York, LPD-21. The second light armored reconnaissance battalion and its LAV 80s are participating in the exercise. The Boomerang Infantry Fighting Vehicle may be equipped with a Kinzhal module armed with a 57mm gun and the Ataka anti tank missiles. Boomerang's cargo lifting capacity and power to weight ratio make it suitable for the installation of the Kinzhal combat module. The Boomerang chassis makes it possible to create various versions. It's highly probable that a customer would consider it adequate to have infantry fighting vehicles mounted on the Boomerang chassis and equipped with other combat modules than the standard one. The vehicle's main variant is armed with a combat module comprising a 30mm automatic gun and cornet anti-tank rockets. The Russian troops expect to receive their first boomerang infantry fighting vehicles in 2019. The remote-controlled Kinzhal module with a 57mm gun and the Ataka anti-tank guided missiles is being mounted on the T-15 Armata infantry fighting vehicle which was demonstrated at the Army 2018 Military Technical Forum for the first time. Both the Kinzhal modules and the Armata platform have been developed by Ural Wagon Zabot, a subsidiary of the Russian state corporation Rostec. Royal Air Force's Voyager 
air-to-air -air refueling tanker has completed the first UK refueling of F-35B Lightning II jets. The refueling took place on the 16th of October at 19,000 feet above the North Sea. The Voyager, based at Royal Air Force Bryce Norton, home of the RAF's Air Mobility Fleet, is no stranger to refueling fast jets, as it is the RAF's sole aircraft able to carry the task on. The Voyager KC Mark II is equipped with two underwing tank pods, and the Voyager KC Mark III has an additional centerline hose for use with larger aircraft than fighters. Airbus Helicopters continues to progress with the development of its RACER technology demonstrator. RACER stands for Rapid and Cost-Efficient Rotorcraft. This demonstrator is funded by European Union's H2020 framework through the Clean Sky 2 program. It aims at providing the best trade-off between speed, cost efficiency, sustainability and mission performance. After the validation of the demonstrator's aerodynamic configuration last year, key subsystems have now successfully passed their preliminary design review giving way to the launching of first components manufacture. Final assembly of the prototype is planned to start in the last term of 2019. Last 11 October, the US company UAVAS announced that it had successfully completed the first stage of the flight tests of the 10-meter prototype of the High Altitude Pseudo Satellites, HAPS, called Apus Duo, which was manufactured as part of the development program of Apus Duo Solar Aircraft with a wingspan of 28 meters. That prototype was made for testing control algorithm, including takeoff and landing, full scale verification of HAPS aerodynamics. The test flights fully confirmed the flight characteristics of the UAV. Welcome in uh, our bridge. We are on a, currently on a frigate, on board a frigate, sailing along coast. As you know, along the coast, ships are under asymmetric threat, and it's a very difficult uh, threat to manage because of the visibility around the ship, especially a stern where there is no visibility on a current uh, frigate. The main benefit of the digital combat bridge for a ship's crew is to have a 360 degree night vision around the ship to manage any kind of operation inside the visual sphere of the ship. It is truly an innovation. This system is not available on the market and will be for the first time available on the FTI in 2023. Another system on our Naval Group booth to support innovation is the Surface Ship Design Lab. In this system, we will show to our customer that we are taken into, we are, we take into account his operational requirement from the early stage of the design of the ship. And then we will apply a lot of innovation we are working on uh, to uh, fulfill his operational requirement for subject of tomorrow and today concerning uh, warship at sea. The aim of this system is to uh, provide the process that we are following in Naval Group to fulfill the operational needs of our customer. So we take into account these uh, operational requirements and then we will study and provide innovation to uh, answer the best way the challenges of today and tomorrow of all navies. So here at Yernaval, I want to showcase our uh, new generation of the RBS-15 anti-ship missile. This is the uh, fourth generation, the Mark IV, and his name is Gungnir. Gungnir is the uh, 
It's from Norse mythology. It's Odin's enchanted spear that never missed its target. It was perfectly balanced and could be thrown by anyone. And we want to put the power of Odin's spear into the naval warfare operators. And I would say we have uh, a robust all-weather performance of the missile. It has a very long range, so the best combination of warhead and range, and uh, very low sea skimming flight. Uh, with the new generation, what we're doing is we're greatly improving the range, uh, we're greatly improving the electronic uh, warfare protection systems, and uh, more or less redesigning everything internally in the missile. So it's the same outer dimensions, but every subsystem has been uh, redesigned from the ground up to offer next generation capabilities uh, to the warfighter. So the range is more than 300 kilometers. We still have a, around 200 kilogram uh, warhead, which is optimized to destroy ships. It has an anti-ship, but also a land attack capability and an anti-jam GPS, and uh, it can be launched both from uh, air and surface platforms. And one of the things that we're also showcasing here now is uh, the, uh, the, the surface-launched uh, missile in uh, two configurations. So we have uh, uh, ship-launched and uh, land-launched. And so the uh, C system uh, that we're going to be uh, talking about here uh, is the missile and all of the necessary equipment to be installed on ships, uh, very flexible placement on board just about any naval platform. And the land system is the, uh, the missile in a, you know, in a truck configuration that can be uh, very easily moved around using existing logistical uh, infrastructure.